Good evening, everybody. Yeah, please have a seat. Have a, have a seat. Okay, so let us see. Uh, let us start our lecture tonight. Maybe we are in the second half, not maybe third. Third quarter, maybe right. So today is three two. Okay. So according to our uh, schedule, so we will start a class and object today. Okay. We just a completely a new chapter and it's a new paradigm and it is my personal my personal favorite chapter okay i hope you will feel interest in this topic okay yeah please uh, st stop side talking and give attention please okay initially this topic seem uh, may seem to be difficult for some of you but if you give attention and if you understand the foundation of object oriented programming then you should be good so and okay not maybe maybe i'm not going to out of town uh, next week so we will have uh, all lectures hopefully and let me see we will have all lectures we will have all lectures. So initially we had a plan to go to six CSE conference, but I'm cancelling. Oh, no, wait, you put online I do not teach any online course. No, I'm not going out of time. We had a plan that I would go conference. But due to uh, uh, <laughs> okay, it's a good thing that uh, you will have face-to-face -face lecture. Uh, <coughs> okay, so let us start. Okay, so so if you go to our as uh, uh, resources on this is introduction to object-oriented programming. Okay, so module six, right? Hmm, did I miss one? Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. So, mo okay, object-oriented programming. Okay, so it's a new paradigm or new concept or new technique of programming. So far, we programmed in procedure-oriented fashion. That is called functional program so the all we so far we created method and in order to reuse our code we put our code in a method and we call that method as many times as we need right so this is a way to reuse our code but object oriented programming has more extended features in order to <coughs> program Especially nowadays, all application, like web-based application, I you see that uh, Android, iPhone app, mobile app, tablet app, all like uh, apps that runs on your printer or your uh, or your motor vehicle or your earphone. Everywhere you see, almost everything is developed with object-oriented fashion. So, what is an object? Let us understand from the beginning. So what is an object? An object in physics, how many of uh, you have a physics course taken? You understand physics, right? In physics, it is called a particle, right? An object is an entity, right? That has uh, some attributes, right? Or characteristics, like a pen, okay? Pen has some characteristics. The first character you should write, right? First, if I Try to write it on a piece of paper, it should write, right? And it has a price, it has weight, it has dimension, it has lead, many, many features. It has right color, it has a brand name. So this is an object. So uh, as a human being, I am an object. As a human being, you are an object, okay? Sometimes some objects are combined to make a larger or bigger object or different object, like 
for instance my finger is an object my hand is an object okay and then my body is an object so this building is an object and this building is developed with many materials like those are each of the materials are object and we can see the, the our whole universe or world is an object so that means an object is an entity that has some characteristics or some features we know in real life right who understand physics in object oriented programming okay we will use object in the concept that as an entity a almost sim in similar fashion for instance let us think about uh, still this exists in many countries so this building whenever this building was built okay so people the contractor or the worker they build they bought each of the materials and then they configure this right to make this building right okay now maybe at some point we see the window we see door nowadays like we see the available the windows or door are available ready made in store right home before louis you go there are many windows door many uh, part of this home available people just buy this when they build a building so they just keep an empty space with a standard uh, like size right like three feet by four feet or four feet by six feet and they know that there are available windows and market on this side and they do not like the like a home builder they do not build a, ha a window or a gate door they just buy door ready-made door and they set up the door right so in this way they can expedite their work so in object oriented fashion so mainly the two main elements are the foundation base elements are class and object so let us understand what is a class and then what is an object i'll ask a question so michael what is it okay what is this is a pen right you want huh object. yes a pen okay so let me write it. What is it? Still a pen, right? That's good. I am asking some questions. Still, maybe this is another pen, okay? Pencil. No. <laughs> Not pencil, okay, pen. Okay, let us start with these two. So these two are pen, right? Although these are different, but it has some features that we know that this is a pen and this is also a pen. So whenever we ask what is it, the answer, whenever say this is a pen, that means a type, right? It is a type, the pen is type of an object, right? Right? You understand? Type or a class. In other words, it is a class. So whenever you say common name, like for instance, a group name or a type name of an object or some object then that is called a class okay and whenever we say say flower right flower we say flower is a collection of some flowers right flower object so whenever we say flower that is a class whenever we say rose family those are objects Whenever we say food, food in general, that is a class. We eat, right? And when you say rice or popcorn or you say that, that are, are object. So object is an individual entity, specific entity of a type, right? But whenever we say in a collection, name in general word, that is a class. Okay, like there are other classes like student, teacher, employee, non-employee, customer, bank account, account holder. All these are class. Like for as a student, you are an individual object. Of what kind of object? A student kind of object. And also as a human being, you are a human being, right? So then also. We said that a class can be classified 
or into sub can be subclasses into more in specific. Like for instance, we say human. As a human being, all of we are human, right? We are object of or, or instance of human. But when you classify, all of you are here students. Okay? And I'm, I'm only one here as a teacher. So as a human being, there is no difference between you and me. All are human beings, right? But when you make more classify the subclass, then I'm different than you. I have some characteristics different than you, right? And there are some other people over here with outside, they are not student. Okay, they are employee or non-employee or whoever in the chat. But we are asking that, so how do we classify or group some object in a common class or common group? That we call a class. A class is a concept. You cannot see a class. Whenever you say student, okay, can we use a student visible? Is a student visible? Yes. Yeah. No. But as a man, as a student, you are visible. As an instance of you, you are visible, right? If I call you, uh, if I uh, tell you, some, please call someone, another student. You will bring, you will call maybe Michael or Rosie or someone, right? Because you know that that person has some characteristic that a student should have. So let us understand the broad category. So understand what is a class and what is a student. Whenever we say like, uh, Pasta. Pasta is a kind of food, right? Pasta, we can say object, kind of food, kind of food, right? But like whenever we say fruits, fruits is an object or a class. So, like another example, you're saying like a car is a class. But yes, you understand. Car. Whenever you say car or vehicle, that is a class. But then if you say Toyota Corolla, that yes, is that is a specific kind of car. That is an object. But if you if you can more classify of, of car, Toyota car, because Toyota has more other classes, right, subclasses. Right. You can make subclasses. Maybe you can say even if you say Toyota Corolla. So then you can say oh, which year? If you classify again against year, right? right. Or, or uh, is, uh, the ignition system, is it auto or manual? Right? right? Is it uh, uh, multimedia or non multimedia? So we can make more in-depth subclasses, right? As long as we will make more subclasses, we will get more concise group, right? Smaller group, right? Whenever we say vehicle, the whole vehicle is equal. And whenever you say Toyota, then a subclass, right? A part. Like all Toyota cars are Toyota cars are, are vehicle, but not all vehicle are Toyota, right? Other vehicles are Honda, like Maruti. You understand the concept? Okay, so whenever, so these are the main concept. If you do not understand them, then this will be difficult for, for you to understand. Okay, so whenever we say fruits, fruits is a class. Whenever we say mango, then mango is an, is a, is an object, understand, right? Okay, thank you, that's good. So, in object-oriented concept, what we will do, we will first create a class. Okay, so then the concept is how can we create a concept? Actually, we will create a class as a type. Okay, so as, as I mentioned that this is a type of pen, right? This type is pen, right? So, in real life, this is a pen, so we can, we will, Im we will we can define a type that will be pen. So then we we'll call that as a class. So in object-oriented programming, the class and objects are the main foundation concept of concept. So let us now recap. So everybody can write down, okay? So write down, open your book, write down in the definition. A class is a user defi user defined by programmer defined data type. A class is a programmer defined data type that contains some variables and some function.
in order to access those variables. Let us memorize this definition. If you understand or do not understand, okay? So what, what, is, what did you write? Can anyone pronounce? Can anyone read aloud, please, for me? What did you write? A class is a is a programmer defined data type, right? Okay, that contains some variables and some functions. What are the purpose of using having functions? In order to access those variables, right? The variables of a class are called attributes or features or field. The variables of a class are called field. Yeah, F I E L D S. Fields match, that means characteristics or attributes. Not a uh, not field that we play football or soccer. That's not that field, okay? Field means attribute or characteristic. Or in programming language, you will see, see the word attribute. Okay, and the functions are called methods. The functions are called methods or behaviors or member functions. So now let us recap. This is important to understand this concept, okay? Then when you, when you understand the basic concept, we can run fast. So a class is a data type. Who defines the data type? Programmer, okay? As a programmer, you will define the data type, okay? Okay, so we know that there are also some built-in data type, right? What are those built-in data type, remember? Or there are primitive, eight primitive data types, right? Uh, yeah, eight. Okay. Uh, who can remember? Int, int short, one, short one, uh, boolean, uh, that's six, one, character, character, and uh, void good, is one. Good, good, Yeah, void is not a data type, okay? So the h one is... Boolean, okay, that's good. Thank you. So what are those type means, okay? The like that a, an integer type can, an integer type variable can hold only integer value, right? Yes. A boolean type variable can hold only a yes no value, right? True false value, right? Okay, so there you see that this type has a limitation. You cannot keep, you cannot put a string variable in an, if you declare string value in an integer variable, right? Can you do? No, we have limitation, right? Okay, now come up. But sometime we have still eight primitive data type and there are some built-in data, uh, also built-in data type like string. There is another built-in type, but not, it's called primitive. Okay, but we have eight to 10 data types, existing data type, but these are not still sufficient. Because you see that as a student, whenever a university or a system, education system deals with student, right? A student has, as a student, you have many features. In order to declare all of your features, like you need you have your name, you have your parents' name, you have your address, email address, phone number, social security address, you have a gender, right? You are a current student or not. We can count 30, 40, 50 characteristics for you. That's it. Now think about if I want to declare all of these variables independently, that I will ne need, like for instance, if you need 20 variables for each student, then for 100 students record keeping, I will need, need 100 times 20. How many? 2,000, right? So dealing with 2,000 variable is difficult, right? But what I can do, so object-oriented programming, I can declare only one type as a student. And within a student, I will put all of your characteristics that are needed, attributes that are needed, and also your functions, the functionality that you do, you take test, you get result, you get promotion, right? You graduate, all together like under a single umbrella. That we will call a student, right? So then our life will be easier. Whenever a new student will come, we will create a new student object and under new student object, we will give all of his information. 
and like on information one string information will be separated from other string information no one will be able to see each other information even you if you are as, as a here in your data our system here you are a student and your sister is a student you cannot have access to your system okay, right and you do not have access to your sister data right okay so this is how in real life programs or application are built so we want to learn this right so this if you learn this this that will be a new experience for you and in this course actually we will give you just introduction so if you learn, want to learn more about object oriented programming then you have to take our 1322 course that is almost all about object oriented programming okay so like student we can create a data type as student or class like employee bank account customer store shop vehicle okay there are be they are in our real life there are many many data type new new data type okay so in uh, let us now understand everyone understand what is a class class is a concept you cannot see a class okay when I say, when I ask you, that please bring, if I tell you, that say next day, please bring a food. Everybody, kind bring at least one, one food. So someone will bring a banana, someone will bring a, an apple, right? Someone will bring some pineapple. Okay, all these are fruits, right? But different name, right? But different type of fruits, right? Different kind of fruits. So now let us understand how to create a class. In order to create a class, we use class keyword. And in pseudocode, we, we will write class all in uppercase. And this is the class name, or this means type name dog. And it will have a begin. And it will have in class and in between whatever the attributes or elements of a class you will put here. So what are the attributes of a class? There are two kinds of attributes, right? two types of elements of a class, right? Some variables and some functions. So what could be the variables for a dog? Okay, can you think? Yes, size could be a variable. It should be short or long, okay? And it should have a name. Name could be one and variable, right? What else? Huh? Gender. That's good. And breed. What is that? Uh, breed. Yeah, breed. And we can say 10, 20 more. 10, 20 attributes, right? OK. And what will be the function of a character, of a, of a dog? What does a dog do for us? What do for itself? What, do, what does a dog do in general? A dog barks, right? Make sound. A dog eat. A dog sleep. sleep. Okay. Whenever you call a dog, if you pet dog, then it responds to us, right? What other features? Snake do too many features, right? Dog run, right? So that are the action. Whatever action a dog can do, we will put those in method. And whatever the features or attributes or characteristics a dog has, we will put those as variable. You understand? So what we will put in variable and what we will put in action or function. So when you say student, so then what will be for a student, what will be variable or attributes of a student? Start, let us start from the beginning. Student has a name, right? Yeah. So name is the first, right? Everyone, a student has a name. What are other? Gender. Gender, true. What else? Major. Major. Okay. Age. Age. Okay. Michael, tell me. Uh, grade level. Yes, grade level. 
email address, phone number, social security number, uh, right? Yeah. Home address, right? Yeah. Parents name, father name, mother name, a lot of information, right? <laughs> well, all we put? Uh, Yeah, a student has maybe has an advisor, advisor name, right? Mm -hmm. A major name or advisor name, okay. Or and what are the functions of a student? Study. Yes, study. Is a current student or not? Is active or is current, right? Or take step, right? Get grade, right? Get promotion, graduate. So these are the functions, right? Okay, so now we understand for an, a, a, a class, what we will put in variable size and what we will put in class size, you understand, right? We have some idea, right? super detail idea, right? Now let us go to, a, to a in depth mode. So this is a pseudocode format. Okay, at this point, I like personally to uh, ask you everybody learn actual program coding, okay, not pseudocode. You de writing, declaring a class in your test, you will ask a question to declare a class, like a student class. But declaring a class in pseudocode format is more, more difficult than writing actual code. Writing actual code is easier than writing pseudocode. Because for pseudocode, you say that you have to start with begin and end, right? Everywhere you need to write type begin and end, everything in type in all in uppercase all in uppercase, right? In, in actual code, you do not need to type in all uppercase. You do not need to type in begin, end, it's easy. Yes, you will use bracket, it's easier. Yeah, you have to remember the bracket, then you have to remember the yes. colon, and yes. you have to remember this and that. So how, in actual format, in C++ or Java or C Sharp? Okay, so give attention please. We are learning three languages here, okay? So I will tell you there are some differences language to language. In this chapter, we will face some major differences, okay? But I will tell wherever is there is difference. But you need to give attention, you need to understand in all three languages. Like in C++ and, sorry, C Sharp and Java, we write class. This is a class keyword, all in lower case, and this is the class name. Usually class name start with A uppercase letter, okay? So this is why D is in dog, dog D is in uppercase, okay? This is dog class and it start with a opening curly break and it ends with a opening break. And everything, all other thing you will put in within this hole, right? Within this area, space. Okay, but in C++, okay, give attention please, in C++, it is a little bit complicated and first complication is start that you have to end a class with a semicolon. So this is one, one difference between C++ and other languages, okay? In C++ you must end a class with a semicolon, but not in Java, not in C Sharp. Now, if we're taking a test and we forget the semicolon, how many points do we take? Uh, that depends on how many points that question has. If the question has 40 points, uh, you should lose some point. If the question has only five points, you should not lose any point. <laughs> if you have the question has only five points to write a dog class, okay, that's a minor, minor error, right? But if you have 50 points to write a class, then everything will be checked. That depends on what will come, we'll, you will understand that, okay? So, but for now, you understand. You understand what I'm telling? Yeah. Okay, that depends on the situation. Sometimes it will be it will be skipped, right? But sometimes, if you are asked to write like a class name in one page, like 50 points, and if you are given 20 minutes for this time, then you sh we should you should write everything correctly, right? Okay. Okay. So in this way, we will create a dog class, and then. What you will do, we will be able to create imaginary dog object. Okay, one thing that we will know that, uh, okay, I will tell you when we create a dog. So an object is an entity, okay, or an instance of a class, okay. 
So let us see that these are, so an object has an ID, uh, identity. Every object in this world has an, has some uh, different attributes as even if I, I would have like two same kind of chain, okay? So these are even those are same company, same uh, price, same color, same, everything same, model, same model, but could I say that the same pen? One pen or two pen? I have two pens, I have pens, okay? How many pens I do have? Two, right? These are actually the same brand, same color, same price, everything. But I cannot say them this is one pen, right? Right. These are two pens, why? There are some different attributes that this pen and between these two pens, this is why we say these are two different pens, right? We cannot say one pen, right? What is that, that attribute, a different between these? What is the attribute that is different between these two pens? Ink level. The ink level is same. This ink level is same. In different places. Yes. Uh, Joe is correct. We cannot put these two pens on a on a on same place, right? We have to put may put one after another, one next to another, or one above another, right? We cannot put these two pens in this real world on a same place, right? So in, in terms of their position, they take in, in their position in this world, these are different. So every object in this world has some kind of different or unique attributes. And whenever we will create our object, we will ensure that our object will have different attributes, at least one different attribute, by which we can distinguish an object from another object or all other objects. Okay, so if we say student is an object, a student is in, in general class, but if we say Michael, Michael is a student, then Michael is an object. Okay, of student kind object, okay. So I discussed that a class that is contains two types of things, some attributes and some methods, okay. So there are many object and class, for instance a bank account is a class. So if we create a bank account, then class, the account number, account owner name and balance that will be, that will state the features, though that we will declare as variable and then deposit, withdraw, check balance, deposit money, check balance, get balance, those are function. So there is, there is a way to know which one is a function, right? You know that, right? Whenever we say at the, after a name, we say a pair of parentheses, then that is a function, right? But whenever is a function is defined within a class, then, then it has a special name that is called method. So whenever we discuss in class concept, object-oriented concept, then we usually mean method. Method meaning a function. So for a dog object, the attributes will be, these are the, could be attributes, okay, rabbit or, or non-rabbit, weight, name, and it could be behavior, these are the eat, growl, run, okay. This could be behavior that are function or method, function, okay, or methods. Okay, so this is the skeleton of a class in pseudocode and this is in, uh, in pseudocode, okay. So you can write, when you write pseudocode, I told them that we, you can write equal sign over here, okay. So you can write equal sign. Instead of using this backslash, Back arrow, okay, so thank you. Back arrow, you just use, use equal sign. And we have changed our uh, pseudocode. I recommended and they already changed our pseudocode guideline. You will see there is no longer this back arrow. No, this is assignment operator, okay. This is, this equal sign is not, no, this is an assignment operator. We are assigning rabbit equal to false. Why is it equal to false? 
the rule change is, is difficult. It's difficult for you, some of you really write uh, back arrow. Takes time, especially for online student when they are taking online test and they try to write uh, backslash and there's some messed up something. They sometimes they went out from their uh, application, okay? They hit on the back here on the uh, this this arrow. Some student they tried to write this by clicking over here in the online section. So this is why I recommended to, and they fixed it, okay? They will fix it, okay? They will fix this also. So, but for now, so you replace all backslash, back, back arrow by equal sign, okay? Okay, there is also constructor, okay? So we will discuss this. Okay, so we will, 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 will. Okay. I will stop here. I will stop here for now for discussing these slides. At this point, I want to go to live program. Okay. So for object-oriented programming, it is better if you use Eclipse. Okay. I will start from Java, then I will go C sharp and C plus plus. C plus plus has some difficult or some different features than Java and C sharp, okay? So let us work together for Java and, and C sharp uh, for now, and quickly then I will go to uh, C++. Okay, so if you have, I have already 1321 review Java. Object-oriented programming. Okay, so if you use Eclipse or NetBean, then there are some different than we use, uh, what is that called, uh, Replit, right? I will use both Eclipse and Replit. So let us start from, uh, from with Eclipse, okay? So we want to create in Eclipse how to create a class. So it's called, uh, this we need to do right click on a project. Uh, this is a package. We do right click and then new and then we click on class. You see that? Okay, we say class. Then we give a class name. Usually a class name is given with the first letter as an uppercase, right? So let us make it as a student. Usually you will see this tab, all other tabs you will keep as this. Okay, do not change anything, but select this one, say public, static, void, main. This will create our main method. That do not change anything for now, just Keep the class name over here and select this one and click finish. So what does it do? It created a student class. Okay. It creates a student class. Like in, in Java, okay, the class name is, is the one the the file is usually saved as like student.java and then whatever class you have, you will have as a public class, your file will be saved as with same class name, say student.java, okay? Usually for, for this one way, but usually what I can say, I want to create another class. Say new and then class and then I say main class. And if I want to, I select this one, public static void main, finish. Then you see that for I have main method, I have the main method within my main class and also within my student class. I have two main methods, okay? But usually we do not need two main methods. We only need one main method. We know that the main method it, it, it is the starting point of our program, right? Main method is the starting point of our program, right? Is the driver of our program, right? So from the student class, I do not need the main. Just deleted main. I will access the student class from my main class. Do not mislead. I have already some existing classes. 
that I discussed previous semester, do not miss it with this. So you, you give attention only this student class and only this main class. Okay, so this is my student class. I want to declare a student class. So as we discuss, what should be the attribute of a student? Can anyone please tell me quickly? Okay, so age. Okay, so gender should be Boolean, right? No. Uh, oh, sorry, string, right? Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. String, uh, gender. Okay, string, gender. And then before that, I have ID, right? ID can be integer or ID can be string, right? Let me say integer, int ID. And then string, name. Okay, what else? Class grade. Class grade. Or let us say, uh, we, let us limit it. Okay, so maybe flow it. Uh, CGPA. You understand CGPA? Cumulative grade point average, right? Huh? Okay. Let us stop with here right? on on boolean. For instance, bool. In Java, we say is boolean, right? But boolean boolean in java boolean boolean we say boolean what is is current there are some student no there are some student that are past student alumni right they are not current student right so you are an active or current student but there are student who graduated okay so these are the for instance if we understand with these we will understand with everything okay and then what could be feature or attributes of a student or all student. We mentioned few minutes ago, what could be a function in a class, student class? Huh? Yes. So study, study is a function and we need this is function and it should have a function should have a return type, right? If it does not return, then I will say void, right? And for for now, remember that we will need either public or private or something for we say void, void study. Okay, this is a function. Okay, and in this function, within this function, we will write whatever we need. Okay, but for now, let us make it public. Later I will understand, I will tell you what is mean by public and private protected, okay, that are, or non-public. Okay, let me tell you one more, one more function then. Okay, I cannot give, I need one more function, but I cannot give this function same name, two function with same name, so I need a different name. What is another functionality of a student? You come up with another functionality of a student? Huh? Okay, as a human being, definitely we sleep. Are you happy with these two or we need more? Okay. Study and enjoy, right? Let us give this name enjoy. Okay. Let us be happy with this. Okay. Hmm? Yeah. What? So, but I cannot give same name twice. I need to give different name, right? Okay. That normal, general normal in norm is that the class name is started with an uppercase letter, and then all methods are, all variables are, and methods start with a lowercase letter. But in C sharp is a different rule. C sharp method start with an uppercase letter. But in C plus plus and Java, and most languages, the first letter comes to start with a lowercase. But it is it is a case sensitive, but is not required. Sometimes we say, say is current that we use camel case. Okay, so and instead of is current, is is visible, right? Is understandable level that there are two words. But if I would say is current, then sometimes it is difficult to understand what does this mean, right? So, or sometimes we can use underscore is current, but we cannot use empty space. 
all variables and function names must be single character single word okay some languages has restriction we will see then in c++ when you go c++ we'll try okay so then we say this is called camel case if it's understood okay now can we say uh, define a value for id equal to one here should we do it okay name let me add another another attribute okay so here let us understand okay so let me go to go it back so this id what we will do we will put an id number of a student and name under name variable we will put a student name and under uh, string variable gender variable we will put student gender and then under uh, cgpa we will put student cgpa yes boolean variable is say yes or two is a, if a current student is current student you are a current student but there are some students they graduated few years ago or but that they left in university B is, but in our student database still they have their record we have our record we have to maintain that record oh so i, I mean current student that means still is 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 really had a good is taking class with this semester okay this semester so if there is a student maybe they are not taking class for 10 years or five years last five years okay but they left in this university still we need to keep their record right okay so these are called variables and these are called methods right now we can assign value to this variable but if we assign variables for all, all object we will get same variable same value but every student have, will have we want every student a different id every student a different name every student <coughs> maybe there may there maybe have one or more student with same name but at somehow they will have some different attributes right at least id it will be different right so this is now so far we declare is just a class structure is an empty structure of a class not completed yet so far anyone has any questions so far okay so if i wanted to create this class in in <coughs> replit what i would do <coughs> let me do is replit So if I start with, never mind, I will go to with C++, okay? Never mind, wait, wait. So Java, we say um, student <coughs> class example one, Java. <coughs> Could you give attention please what we get if we give this name? <coughs> okay, this is the our main class. By default, we got main class that contains the main method, okay? And this is the difference, remember that in Eclipse, we have a main class that has a public type. Public class, main class that contains the main method, but here in Replit, we will, do not, we will not have the public keyword, okay? And, but in addition to this main class, that whatever we created two different classes over here, I could put all code in one class, or here I, de I declare two different classes. One is main class, another is student class. Okay, there is a way that I could put all code within the, all of this code within the main class. I could put all of this. I can put, when you declare a class, I can put a class inside another class or outside another class. But when you declare method, I give a restriction that you cannot declare a method within a method, right? <coughs> Remember that I told you, you cannot declare a method within a, another method, but in for class you can do. But for now, I can do like this. <coughs> if I say class student, see this class student class start here and it ends over here okay and this is the another class it is okay i can if i do this way this is okay 
but for simplicity we can keep this class student class in diff in different file so let us remove this i don't need this in different file i can I can remove this. I can delete this class. So that will be same thing for replete and so whatever. So in my program, I have student class that start in line number three and ends in line number 26. It is not completed yet, okay? And then I have another class that is name is main class. I can give his name same name as 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 main in contrast with similar with uh, uh, replete okay I can give you any name but I cannot have two class names same name okay is okay now you see that okay then in a in replete I will put my main class over here sorry student class over here this is my student class this is my student class it start on line number two and it ends in line number 24 and this is my main class another main class that uh, start 26 and end 30. so main class is the class that contains the main method okay in a program or in an application you will have only one main method that is the starting point of your program the class that contains the main method this is my main method okay that is called the main class or driver class okay so here this is my main class and here this is my main class in eclipse we use public keyword so the class in eclipse in a file you can have multiple classes but only one of them will have name will have type as public you cannot have two public classes in Eclipse with you cannot have two public classes this is an error right in Eclipse you will have only you can have only one public class so I'm fine right now so now we have ID, name, gender, these are the variables and these are the methods. Okay, we will use this variable to hold a particular student's attribute. Okay, and we will use this function to define a particular student's functionality. Now, let us see. This is the class so far we declare. Now this point time we can create an object of a class. Okay, so to create an object of a class has different rule in, in there is C++ and C sharp and Java have different rule. Okay, but in C sharp Java we're talking about Java. Java and C sharp have same rule. It's simple. We will use the class name. What is my class name over here? student right remember that when i want to create an id we use a type right so we use a type for name variable we use a type for gender variable we use type first right for is current we use type first so in order to create a student variable we need to create we need to use the type first so what will be our student type say I have to say student this is my type if I say s1 what is your name someone what is your name Mike Mike equal to new student so here Mike is a student okay Okay, so if I want to create another student, I have to give same code but with different name. Okay, so who, uh, who wants to be another student? Whose name I can use it? Huh? What is your name? E? Okay, give me name. L I A. L I A. L I A is another student. Okay, we can have another student. Maybe my. Huh? 
D. Okay. Let us start with this. D. So we can have million, million students. Okay. Then, this is, so for instance here, so Mike will be a new student, imaginary student, okay. Only Greek, only God can create a student or, or a human, human being, right. We cannot create a human being, we will create an imaginary student, okay. So then now, let us, okay, so we have here ID, right. So if I put a value of ID, then we can print that value, right? So now, we will go there. Okay, so what is this one? So here we use student two times, right? This is a student and this is also student. But here this, we added this as a method, right? So when I said that, whenever we, we use a parenthesis after a name, that is a method or a function, right? So here this student, with this one is type and this one is a method. A class or all classes contain a special method. Their name is exactly the class name. Sometimes it may be default. It may be not be defined yet. Okay, so we do not have any student method over here. This method is called a constructor. Every class contains or should contain a constructor or a class contains a constructor. That constructor is used to create an instance of that class type. So here this one student is a called is a student method is called a constructor method. Even for this one if we, if we do not use a constructor method then we say that there is a constructor that is default constructor. The default constructor is like this. Like this. Okay, usually you say in C++ we say public. So this is the default constructor. You can have it or do not have it. We will use this, we expand this in order to assign value to the values, okay. So far we just create a template of a class. We have not created, put any value for a class. So now we have Mike, Leah and Dave, three students. Okay, now let us try to print this out. Mm -hmm. sure. Okay, so if I want to print mic, so let us see if I print mic and then if I want to print uh, Leah and if I want to print Dave, okay, but before I this, I run this program, let us create another variable, for instance an integer variable, integer x. For instance, x equal to say 5. And if I print x, then what will be printed over here? What will be output for my this x? Sorry, if I say x, I will get, I'm sorry, yes, I will get, I will get 5, right? You understand everybody, right? You understand this code, right? But what I will get if I print Mike, Leah, and Dave. Anyone has an idea? Okay. So, so far, we when we create an object instance, that object instance takes a place on memory. Memory means computer memory RAM. Like a normal variable takes its place on memory. Okay. So, this object takes a memory. But if I want to print, this is a an in, is is a integer variable that is a primitive variable. But this is a class. The difference you will see the amazing difference between when I want to print x and when I print to. Uh, let me make another thing. Yes, another print. If I say string. Uh, str 
string hello equal to hello hello world and if I you know that if I print hello over here so then if I print hello over here what will be printed hello world right for this one and for this one it will be printed x but what will be printed for Mike Leah and Dave sorry these are object Mike Leah and object this is class yes yes Mike is a new student Mike is a student so whenever we create a normal variable we do not need to use new 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 is a keyword but whenever we create an object we need to use new keyword this is new keyword whenever we create an object then we need to use new keyword so if I run this they will see there's some amazing output for the for Dave, Mike, and Leah, we are getting this output, right? For X, we got five, we are happy. For hello world, we got hello world. But for Mike, Leah, and Dave, we got something that we don't understand, right? Actually, what we found here, this is the memory address where where Mike lives in mic takes place in memory this is the memory address where lia takes you see that these address are different this may be consecutive these are hexadecimal number system okay and this is another another different whenever they find a space they see okay so is this nice or is this should be a problem it is good for a computer that he computer can detect where this object lives in, right? Or this size. But this, as a human being, it is difficult for us, right? Okay, we will come back here. We need to override the two string method in order to get a meaningful hello. Okay, we have five more minutes. So let us see. So this con this is a call constructor, right? Before that, what we need to do, I need to use this constructor this constructor to assign values for id name gender like this 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 and this how that is done usually we can have it this is a default constructor and i let me make it another constructor can we have multiple constructor is a method in a method yes we can have multiple methods with same name in a class, right? We discussed earlier method overloading, but this method must be different in terms of their name, uh, attribute names or uh, argument name or type, number of arguments. So I need to leave this integer ID. I need this. So that I'm converting semicolon by comma in order to declare this as argument. So having too many arguments is time consuming. So I need to semicolon. Okay, and I need to get rid of the last semicolon. Okay. So all in one line, okay. Now, these two are different method. This has no, this is called default, and this is called augmented, okay. So then I need to do one more thing. So today's time is short. In next lecture I will discuss. I need to use this dot id equal to id. This dot name equal to name. This dot what else? Name gender equal to gender this dot cgpa if I say in eclipse that is good that whenever I type in dot then it comes all of the attributes it comes cgpa I can select this way equal to cgpa 
and if you say this dot say is current equal to okay I could not I will not be able to finish today but in your next lecture I will discuss you will understand do not miss our next lecture okay okay so whatever we define now quickly I will uh, I will skip the details part here what I did but let me so whatever we did we assigned attributes so we defined a an argumented constructor and we will use this argumented constructor to assign values to student like for instance remember that first one is uh, id second one id is integer type then next to string type then flow it and then boolean so i will use here mic id equal to one name equal to michael michael l i u right okay then the third one is gender okay okay male and then fourth one is cgpa what cgpa we need michael Four, okay 4.0 i gave him okay then what is the next value is boolean is current student yes right so in say in true mm -mm. Okay, remember. Okay, this is a this is a problem. This is a problem for Java and C sharp that if you want to assign value for a fluid type, then you have to give f either in uppercase or lowercase. Otherwise, it will make you an error. Okay. So now, so then, 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 let me do this for, can I have five more extra minutes today to finish this? Okay. Give attention please, okay. What is the name is this one? Leah. Leah, what is the last name? Candy. Candy. Okay, what is male or female? female? Okay, female. What is the GPA you wanna give? Two point four. You don't like her? Okay, is a current student or or a past student? Okay, she is gone. Okay, what is the, this one? Okay, ID will be different. Okay, so ID is two. Okay, so I'm sorry, I'm taking five more minutes. Okay. Uh, so this I will be three and this uh, okay David David Michael okay okay and male and maybe three point zero and two okay now apparently you, you, you expect that these values will be printed here right I expect that these values should be printed over here but it will not print it will still printing my garbage the reason is that i need to do one more thing okay give me uh, three more minutes please i will do be able to so i need to use i need to override that two string method so in eclipse i can do quickly so eclipse if i say do source and then then generate generate two string method in Eclipse is easy, okay? If I said generate two string method, all it says selected all fields, okay? And then I will say create generate. And it has generated the two string method that returns a string type value. Now, if I run this program, I got student Mike's, you see that? The first name. Mike Liu and I got Mike's gender equal to these. I got his GPA. I got his current student. So until I, until I do this, in until I override this two string method, I will not be able to see my output in a human expected format. So if I 
so it get rid of the two string methods till I will get my address. So if I bring back the two string method, then I will get my expected output, right? Okay. So here, so same method over here for the st student class. If I use this code in uh, in Eclipse, oh sorry, uh, in C sharp is same. Only in C sharp, only you need to change the this system dot out dot println by console dot right line. Okay, but in C plus plus it is different. And in our next lecture, I will start with C plus plus. Okay, I will convert this code C plus plus. C plus plus has some different features. How to do we use class and create object? Okay. Do not miss our next lecture, okay? Next lecture will be important. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, sir. Send me an email. Send me an email. Sure. Bye. Thank you. So Michael, okay, this is code I code I got in replete, and I can change it easily with uh, into C sharp just by doing. C sharp. Okay, that two string method. Two strings, two is in a work case. Is working. Is working also in C sharp. That's good. <laughs> 